All right, welcome to the big overview video. So in this video, what I'm gonna be showing is how to create this image using Substance Painter in Substance 3D Stager. Again, this is just the intro video. It's designed to show you the overall workflow from start to finish before we get into some of the details. So sit back, relax, don't worry about following along on your own computer and just kind of settle into the process. Okay, so let's start off inside of Substance 3D Painter here. I've already imported one of the 3D models from the Substance 3D Asset Library. It's this cosmetic bottle. And as you can see, the bottle is broken up into two components. There's the body and there's the cap. To get started, I really just want to apply some basic materials to this just to start to get my idea under control. For that, I'm gonna add some plastics and I'm gonna start with this glossy plastic as the base and a glossy plastic on the lid. Now for the lid, what I'm gonna do is going to be creating um, a little bit of a white color. So I can just scroll down here into my parameters and level up here. Now I don't want to go completely to white because in a PBR workflow, which is the physically based rendering workflow that Substance Painter works in, you don't ever wanna go pure black or pure white. You wanna just kind of live somewhere in the middle of that just because that's a better sense of reality as a whole. All right, then for the, the color of the bottle itself, I'm just going to select kind of a, uh, a little bit of a desaturated kind of a pinkish warm color here, kind of something in that neighborhood as well. All right, now one of the things that I really like about Substance Painter is that it gives you the ability to add some micro detail in the model itself outside of just what you would think of as the textures. And in this particular model, one of the things that's always not bothered me that I've always wanted is crimping along here. Because whenever you think of a lotion bottle or anything filled with liquid, during the manufacturing process, you're going to need to crimp that a little bit to make sure that it's staying in place. So we're going to add another layer that instead of focusing on the color or the reflections or anything like that, we are going to turn all that stuff off and just focus in on the height. And what the height is gonna do is it's gonna be pushing down in. So I'll just push that slider back. Now for that layer, I'm going to want to isolate it to a couple of different areas. I wanna isolate it to just this uh, top of the bottle. And I also wanna isolate it to stripes. So the way I'm gonna do it is I wanna get the stripes in there first. So for that, I'm gonna create a black mask. The black mask is just gonna say, hey, you know that thing that I wanna do, only do it in a certain area. We're gonna put in a fill, which is gonna allow us to put in a texture map. And for that, I'm just gonna put in these stripes. So as you can see out of the gate, that's not exactly what we're looking for. It's diagonal, it's not in the right spot, but no problem at all, it's very, very easy to do. So for this, the first thing I'm gonna do is just adjust this parameter in the, um, in the stripes texture map. And basically I'm just shifting it by rotating it. And although I ultimately want them to be vertical, it's totally fine if they're horizontal. And then I can adjust the number of stripes and all that good stuff. So for the horizontalness and getting that switched around, I want to jump into my 2D view of this. And all I want to do is take this map and rotate it around. I could have also done it numerically here. I could just say 90 or like go from zero to 90. But I, I tend to like to do things interactively. Now I want to scale this down to just the region that I want. Now to determine the region that I want, I'm gonna jump into my split 3D and 2D view. And I'm going to scale this down and kind of isolate it right around the base here. Now you can see it's repeating throughout the whole thing. Totally normal, Substance 3D Painter by default tries to tile every texture that you apply. You can simply turn that off by going to repeat to none. Now I can go in, I can position this roughly around where I want. I want a little bit off the edge. You can see that it's it's uh, right there that, that you're gonna want to um, make sure that it's it's not quite all the way to the edge. I like that look a little bit better. Now I'm just gonna kinda eat in these edges a little bit. So it's just right up there along the edge. All right, cool. All right, great. Now if I wanted to go back and adjust the number of stripes, it's very, very easy. I can go in again to this parameter and increase or decrease that. One other thing that I want to do with the height information is that anytime I do that, I always like to add a little bit of blurring to it just because that like very straight edge thing just doesn't feel very realistic to me. So all I have to do is add another 
point to my layer stack here. So it's like a, it's, it's a stack inside of my mask. So it's like a layer stack inside the layer stack. But, uh, you know, and I just gonna go ahead and blur that a little bit and add like a point uh, three pixel thing to that. All right, cool. Now that I have that out of the way, the next thing I wanna do is I want to add a logo to this or main branding thing. So I'll just go ahead and change the name of this to, uh, I will call it crimping. And the next layer on top of that is going to be our logo. For that, I've preloaded a logo from the Adobe Stock Library. So I'll just go ahead and drag and drop that in. Let's see, all right, should I call it label? I think? So I'll search for it by label. Got it right here. I can just drag and drop it into my display. Again, we can go to the 2D view and see that it's positioned over top of everything. Just need to scale it down. And again, it's repeating by default. We will just turn off that repeating and then just position this where we need to. All right. And again, this is a pure black and white label. And generally, again, what I like to do is make sure that we're pulling off those, those pure black and pure white values. Um, Cause again, you can already see that it's starting to blow out pretty easily. So that's easy enough to do. Again, we can just add a little layer stack inside the layer stack here. And for that, we're just gonna add some levels. And if you're used to Photoshop or Illustrator, you've seen these before. And basically I'm just going to take down the white level. So it's not just like this pure white. So it's just gonna roll it off just a little bit. That's a lot, just a little bit, there we go. All right, cool. All right, so now that we have that, the next thing that I wanna do is I wanna put a pattern in here. So for that, you can just go ahead and create another layer, call it pattern, create a black mask for it, create a fill inside that. This is something, and I'll talk about this in the in a future lecture, but you're gonna get very, very used to that. All right, so now we're in here, I'll go ahead and just type pattern, and I will go ahead and pull in one of my Adobe stock patterns uh, that we have loaded. Now this, you know, there's been a couple times that we've wanted to retile something and um, or resize something and we don't want it to tile. In this case, we like that it's tiling. It's, it's doing really well. So as you can see, it's going over top of the label. No problem at all. I can just slide the label on top of it. Great. And now inside this pattern, I can go in and I can say, you know, I want this to be a different color or let's say I want it to be like, you know, something a little crazy. So the one thing that you know, you could definitely do different colors, but I really want to take advantage of the unique nature of 3D and that we're not just working in color. We can work in height, as we've seen. You can also work in metallicness and roughness as well. So for that, I am going to go ahead and deactivate the color here and just say, you know what, for this pattern, I actually want the roughness to be down to zero and I want the metallicness to be all the way up. And you can see now that it, that's a pretty cool looking effect. Now it's a little bit heavier on the, basically I want this pattern to be inverted, uh, which is no problem at all. I can go in and then again, just add another uh, levels on top of that and just click invert. Now, if there's another pattern that I want, I can quickly go in and like, you know, if I'm trying out different ones, I can just swap those uh, here and there until, until I get the one that I, I really, really want to work with. So yeah, we'll take it back to that original one that we had. All right, cool. So now that I've got this pretty much in place, the question is, what do we do with it, right? So, you know, this is this Substance Painter is designed to be a look development application, not the final rendering solution. So for that, what you wanna do is you wanna go to File, and if you're working in another 3D application, like a Maya, Houdini, Blender, anything like that, you can export the textures. You can either export as individual texture maps as like PNGs, JPEGs, TIFFs, whatever. And we have a bunch of templates set up for you for if you're working in Arnold or Unity or Unreal or anything like that. But what I would recommend doing is actually not exporting the individual texture maps, but exporting the SBSAR, which is our substance material file type. And then what you can do is you can use one of the many, many plugins that exist in almost every 3D application out there to ingest the, just that one file into your scene. But if you wanna stay in the Substance ecosystem, 
you, what you can do is you can take this model and directly send it over to Substance Stager by one of my favorite features, which is the send to functionality. So I can just click file, send to, send to Substance Stager. This will package this material all up and the, and the model as well, and it'll load it inside of Substance Stager in a matter of seconds. All right, so this gets plopped right into the middle of our scene here. And from there, I can build out a quick little uh, prop piece. Again, if you want to know how to do this, I have a Substance Stager course on the YouTube channel. So you can check that out as well. And I'll go and throw down a little plane here underneath this. And a little backdrop here. And what I'm going to do is highlight this object. I will then take the background, grab the color, and just sample kind of this pinkish hue in there. Just gonna go ahead and tone that down a little bit, make it a little bit less saturated. Same thing with the cube. I'll just make sure to apply that material to that as well. Now I will activate my ray tracer to see what this really looks like in the final render setup. Amazing. From this view, I can just click this camera icon and create a camera. From there, I can, you know, adjust the focal length, make it a uh, square aspect ratio, activate depth of field, set my focal point, increase the blur. All right, I'm liking this product shot. It's just like, feels like it's missing something. So in this particular case, I actually really like adding this splash element to the scene. So I can drag and drop that in, push that back around the bottle. Again, this is just a static splash element. My frame it a little there. And then I could take one of the default stager uh, materials, not glass, the water, put it on there. And now we've got a lovely product shot of our quickly labeled bottle with a splashing element. And we can render this out and have a product shot in just a few minutes. So yeah, so that's the brief overview of Substance Painter. It's just a little start to finish workflow so you can see kind of what we're gonna be building here. For the next steps and the next parts of the process, I'm gonna be talking through the individual tools, the workflow, all that stuff kind of one by one. But before I got into that, I just kind of wanted to show the overall process so you can see where this thing is building to. All right, in the next video, I'm gonna to go to square one, start with the basics, show the interface, the, the basic navigation tools with the side of Substance Painter. So let's go ahead and kick that off.